cases, it will depend on what roof cladding is. Uh, if it's the gecko roofing, as we call it, roof cladding, that doesn't need an insulation because it is the insulator. However, in any other type of roofing, you need to put on top of that a reflective, this is a reflective foil fiberglass made by Dow Corning. This goes on top of, and to say the least, this is critical. Every roof must have this or you're facing pizza oven effect. So that goes in, in the nailers and then above, above the, the, the nailing, the strapping for nailing, and then above that basically goes your roofing, whatever you may have. Basically our two types of roofing that we use is the gecko roofing, magnesium ge gecko roofing. I don't have any samples. Again, it's in the container on its way to us. The first shipment of that, it comes in. That load is going to be in a bright blue. Then there's green, red, white, and silver that are available in that. Now, an upgraded roofing that is becoming much more popular is this. This is a plastic um, tile, imitation tile, that um, particularly it's, we've, there's two made here locally. Now I have an entire video comparing the, the two of them, but basically this is a very good roofing, very dependable, extremely durable. Uh, you can literally drive a truck over top of this and it won't lose its shape. Um, and it doesn't leak. So, moving onwards, that's a, now the plastic is, is more expensive than the gecko. It's not much, but it is more expensive. Um, and it works out to about $4 a square meter, so it's not a big difference. And those are the only two types of roofing that we deem as being suitable in a tropical climate. Anything else has its problems. Again, in our book, there's an entire chapter dedicated to roofing, so uh, this is to be brief, so we'll, we'll move on. Um, okay, aside from the roof cladding, the next big thing is gutters or eaves trough, and basically any of them that are made by a Costa Rican company are made wrong, unless I made it, or had it made for me. Because they have an interesting idea here, if we use this as a sample, this is the outside edge of the, the gutter, they put it higher than this edge. So if the gutter fills up, the water runs into the house. I've got a blog post all about the nonsense of this, whereas we build them this way, where this edge is lower than the edge connected to the facies, so that if it not yet. When it overflows, and it surely will in our rain, at, some point, at one time or another, I, that's the thunder that went with the rain. Um, it will overflow and send water into the house. I've got, again, an entire uh, video there about bad roofs, bad gutters, and what it takes when you have to go in and replace, spend $15,000 to replace a five-year-old roof because of that. So those are what, and we only use a baked enamel gutter. So anything that's just uh, galvanized is horrible because paint doesn't stick very well to it and it co actually costs more money. So that's, another, that's, our, that's our standard in that uh, respect too. Overhangs, extremely important folks. We're in the tropics, nothing under a 1 meter or 39 inch overhang. You got to keep the sun off the windows especially and ideally as much off the walls as possible. If it's not there, it can't heat up your house, but windows is absolutely critical for this. So that's, you know, a given. If, if we're not making a pizza oven, you have to have that. Um, the electrical services we use, are, we use all GE products, uh, typical 125 amp uh, service, which is for the normal houses is Average size houses is more than adequate, especially with all the other measures we take to reduce electrical consumption, uh, uh, particularly uh, using LED, we exclusively use LED lighting, so that reduces like 90% of the electrical charge uh, for, for lighting by uh, going with that. Uh, 
and the size of the panel is basically according to what the circuits are in the house. But uh, you know, generally, uh, a standard um, size panel for us is 24 circuits, more than enough to do most of the houses that we're we're working with. Uh, and of course, we always follow um, the, the electrical codes. I tend to lean towards the Canadian electrical more than anything, which is more stringent than the Tico one. And certainly, ground fault protection is everywhere, without question. Here, it typically shows up in the drawings, but it never gets to the site. And nobody ever says, hey, this isn't here, because there's no inspection. And it's plumbing services, um, our system. Uh, we use strictly Derman's uh, tube, which is uh, what they call an SDR 32.5. Uh, which is over about double the thickness of what is typically used and again I have lots of articles on the website and videos showing exactly why this is so critical and run at a 2% slope all the time without question no 90 degree turns ever those are all kisses of death if you want and of course vented you know the system must be vented uh, at all times. Again, those are all code, but it, but I, I haven't seen it put in an installed in the house here yet. Um, certainly in our house it is. Uh, the water lines, uh, typically they use PVC. We do not, will not, ever use PVC for a potable water line. We use strictly PEX. Now uh, this is, again, I've got several videos on the use of PEX, but this is our, the PEX product that we use. Here, get a, a good look at uh, at that, and I just have these as samples to show how slippery PEX is. That silicone and PVC glue, and it will not stick. So if this won't stick, nothing else will stick in your potable. Brass fittings, stainless steel manifolds. This is for the distribution system because it's not just the PEX, and the fact that it's a flexible hose that will withstand earthquakes and have, uses no fittings, no hidden fittings uh, anywhere, especially under concrete. And the manifolds do the distribution of the water dedicated to each service. But again, that's what we use. That's the standard from Durban that has basically three lines of a PVC window. These are extremely economical. This is the basic, what they call the economy line, basic with single pane glass, that's all that's required in the tropics, and then we go up to, at a, roughly a 30% upcharge, we go up to a heavier extrusion, and then there, these are both made in Costa Rica. Now this extrusion is much heavier, this is a German made extrusion, and it's typically used in operable windows, casings, awnings of this type. And noteworthy is it comes in colors. So we can get a, these are basically the color ranges that it comes in. Now when this is applied, most people would be fooled. They would think that window is wood when it's not. Um, but very economical on the whole, excellent quality, excellent service, and that's who's we use. There, there is others, there, I mean, there's a line of top-notch, excellent wood windows manufactured here. Uh, generally, I find our clients are not, because they're like 400% more money. But it's available, and again, with our type of contracting, that's an upcharge. That is the client's choice. But the basic we start off with is the, uh, the Durham and PVC. Um, you know, the paint finishes on it, we use either Sur or Lankov paint products. Uh, as you saw here for the exterior, we use strictly an acrylic stucco. If you don't use acrylic in this country, it is going to turn green in places. So we simply, cement-based stuccos don't exist as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and we have a small plant that produces that force in any color that you can possibly uh, want. Um, plumbing fixtures, basically we have a supplier of a standard plumbing fixture that um, it's made in China, good quality, reasonable price, 
Uh, again, the sky's the limit, and the client can choose, you know, more expensive if they choose. Um, electrical fixtures, the same thing. I have a supplier for electrical fixtures, and the choice is the client's is what we put in a basic line and whatever they want. Uh, cabinets, basically, we start off with the, you know, um, case goods that are malamine with a Molina wood, solid wood cabinet face, and that can go up to Cedro, whatever. In, again, anything the client wants, but the basic, that is the basic we start off with. There's, uh, doors and moldings, we have a line of, uh, we have a manufacturer that makes all of our doors for us, and uh, these are extreme, the same manufacturer actually makes our beams for us and whatnot, and we'll make all hardwood doors, raised panel, very reasonable prices. You couldn't even dream of doing back in Canada or, or the, uh, the States. And again, all hardwood moldings. And, and our wood choices there basically are acacia, the same as the beams are made out of. It can be in laurel, it can be in what they call cedro here. Uh, lots of choices and they can make incredible grand entrances. Uh, again, depending on the client's needs and desires for style there, anything is available. And the other one thing that we've been pushing uh, a great deal on is energy efficiency and getting homes to a net zero basis by putting in a PV system, photovoltaic system, which is now um, the payback on that is six to eight years, uh, depending on the situation. Uh, but the first thing is to deal with the consumption and get out any heavy consumers like the gas. We put in a gas system for running stoves, dryers, barbecues. Um, Definitely uh, solar, hot water, I mean electrically heating hot water in this climate is insane. Uh, but that, that's something that, um, you know, and again a lot of our clients are looking at controlling their costs. So that's it. And first of course with all of our line of products and whatnot is designed to have a cool home without a need for air conditioning at all. If you've got air conditioning it means you've screwed up in your materials, your design, or typically both. Um, now something to bring about with the magnesium for the roofing, um, this is a sample of a, of a piece of magnesium panel that we took and we put in a settle, this is a part of the burn from acetylene torch which was 2400 degrees, it does not burn but very interesting when you look at the back where the styrofoam is there, nothing is even yellow, well styrofoam burns very easily so this does not transfer heat. Magnesium is a great protector against thermal transfer of heat and or cold. So when that goes on a roof, we do not need insulation. Um, and even if somebody, and it's possible, if somebody wants to dress up the house more with a plastic roof, they can put magnesium on top of it uh, uh, first. Now, other products uh, that we have, well, here's an interest, just a little example, a door suite. I have to import those because you cannot find a door sweep in Costa Rica. It doesn't exist. But most of our clients don't like critters crawling in underneath their doors. So, simple thing, I import it because I know that's what people expect. And you cannot go to the Ferretria or lumber yard and just buy it. It doesn't, it simply does not exist. So looking at all my toys, it looks like I have demonstrated everything that basically goes into what amounts to those architectural standards. You can, this is just a brief overview of everything. You can go and study lots more. I mean, with 286 pages and growing, you'll find lots more information and stuff is coming up all of the time. We're always watching. For example, this plastic roof, we just discovered this like three weeks ago. And yeah, it's a better product than the first one we were using and it's 30% cheaper. The first house we were going to do, we saved over the owner over $1,000 simply by changing. Actually, we upgraded the roof and saved money. So that's something we're always doing, always looking at what is the best because, you know, as the saying goes, garbage in, garbage out. You know, you've got to have good products to start with. Anyways, that's getting us a run up, so have yourself a good day and thank you for your visit.